Daz, I know you love your driving games and you've always wanted to be a racing car driver, but I think you're just taking this a little bit too seriously, mate. I'm Jamie Atiko, and this gentleman here is Darren Malcolm, and we're your escorts to guide you through the gaming jungle. That's right, Jay, because we're going to be cutting through the console undergrowth and finding a path around the PC swamp to deliver you safely to the gaming oasis that is Gamesville. Now, coming up on today's show, we have got a first glance, a brand new coin-operated game to hit the streets. I'm talking about Dolphin Blue. And we're going to be jumping into our cockpit's 1992 star as we take to the skies in pilot wings. And I'll tell you what, speaking of cockpits, We'll be jumping into cockpits of a different kind for today's face-off because we have got Formula One 2003 on the PS2. And Jay, I am so excited because I've got my racing helmet on, I've got my driving gloves because nobody is getting an elite stamp today. Now, Jay, jump into your cockpit and tell the people what's going on in Gainesville. Strap up, my man. Safety yep. first. Right, today in the PC Lounge, we've got Home World 2. So it's RTS time again in the PC Lounge. And let me tell you something. This game has got a lot to live up to. All will make sense later in the show. But moving on now to the console kitchen, we have got Ghost Hunter. Now, if you suffer from high blood pressure, or you know, you even suffer from a nervous disposition, you better sit down for this one, because things are going to get really, really scary in the console kitchen today. But as always, we've got Lucy in the mobile pad. And Lucy, what's in the mobile pad today? Well, we're going to be meeting up with Winnie the Pooh and Eeyore in Piglet's Big Adventure on the GBA. It's a great little um, fun uh, action adventure for younger gamers. Right, you heard it from Lucy herself. That's what's going on. Also, before I forget, you might see them scattered around the studio. It's the one and only G Team. These are the people that keep me and Daz informed with everything that's happening in the gaming world. Right, that's what's going on in Gainesville today. You want to get involved? Do you want to send a message to anyone here? It's very, very easy. This is for UK digital satellite viewers. Press that red button on your remote. It will cost you 25p, so please ask the bill payer for permission first. Daz, we've done enough talking, mate. What should we do now? Let's get into first gear, Jay, because I want to get gaming. Yeah. It's round one of today's face-off and it is a Grand Prix extravaganza because we are playing Formula One 2003 on the PS2 because we've got two gamers with a very, very serious grudge. First, we've got Damiano Schumacher. Mind if I call you Damiano Schumacher? No, I don't mind at all. Yeah? I mean, I mean, you're driving the Ferrari, so, you know, this is Schumacher's car. How do you feel you're going to do? Basically, I'm going to drive it as well as if he was the man himself. <laughs> <laughs> You've got you, you to love that. So, I mean, you know, you guys are here for a grudge. Tell me all about it, Damiano. Well, you know, this, this boy here, this girl, he won't leave her alone. Like, she keeps on calling me and then he still wants to go and, you know, he keeps on trying. Oh, it's like But that. she's only for me, you know. Oh, so, <laughs> so you've got a lot of pride. So you're, you're bringing it to the track today to prove that you are the faster driver. Yeah. All right, good stuff, Damiano. Right, let's meet our second driver. His name is Luke Montoya, isn't it? Yes, mate. And how are you feeling today, mate? I'm feeling good. Now, your name's not obviously Montoya, but, I mean, you're driving in the Williams, so you're Luke Montoya today here on Gamesville, right? Yeah, sure. Now, I mean, what's he talking about, this grudge? I mean, what, what is this all about? So, I mean, a, a feud over a girl, I take it? Yeah, man. So, is it the winner takes the prize? Of course. Yeah, <laughs> and you're going to be the winner, right? Yeah, sure. Mate. So, you're confident, mate? Yeah. Nice one. Well, you know what? I'm backing you today. Good luck. All right, cheers. Nice one. <laughs> well, I love a bit of an F1 action, and I know everybody here at Gamesville does. And if you do too, then you really should take a look at this. Formula One games are as old as gaming itself. Unlike the games of old, though, F1 games of today include all of the official drivers, cars and tracks in painstaking detail. It's a driving fan's dream. As with all F1 games, accuracy is the key. One false move and you'll be off the track and eating gravel. Right, I am literally itching to get this one on. But before we do, let me explain Gamesville's F1 rules. Now, basically, face-offs are divided into three rounds. And each round is going to be seriously fast and furious because it's one lap around the track. 
Now, whoever does their lap the fastest is going to be today's winner. It's as simple as that, right, Daz? It is, Jamie. And you know what? I just want to get it on. Guys, are you ready? Yeah! yeah! All right, gentlemen, please take your seats and start your engines. OK, All make right. sure you put your seatbelts on, guys. Safety first. Absolutely. Right, we are playing F1 2003 on the PS2. So, after three, three, two, one, let, let the race begin! Oh, and there are so, we've got Don Riano Schumacher on the bottom screen, and we have got Luke Montoya, who's racing on the top screen. And at the moment, we are approaching the first bend of this one lap race. Schumacher taking a very nice overtake on the inside there, but Montoya is still in contention. He is in contention. Damiano Schumacher working his way through the traffic. Oh, doing incredibly well. Both drivers seem to be picking up a little bit of gravel on their tyres there, Daz. Yep, they do, Jake, they do. And Schumacher's in a little bit of a problem. Oh, the lead just keeps switching. Schumacher running into some traffic here. No. Montoya taking the lead. And he's looking good, he's looking real good. We're about to go all the way around the track. Schumacher racing on the bottom screen, and we've got Luke Montoya on the top screen. And they are playing Formula One 2003 on the PlayStation 2. Oh, and this is a very tight race at the moment. There's only two more bends to go to the finish line, Jay. And I'll tell you what, Luke Montoya is looking very good. He just made a mistake, though. And will it cost him? Oh, but Schumacher makes the same mistake on that. It's very corner. rare that Schumacher makes a mistake in a Grand Prix, Jay. Now, it's very moment, close. Luke has got one corner to negotiate. They've got the long the corner there. Straight. Take this one very well, Damiano. And Luke is on the home straight. He's just about to finish. Yes! Yeah! Well, what can I say? The man is round one's winner. What a race, mate. How did you do that? With ease, mate. Yeah? Take I mean, what corners. was your tactics? Just break early, take the corners nice. Nice and, and speed smooth. Off. Yeah. Yeah? And then floor it as you're coming out the corners, yeah, right? Course, yeah. You did really well, mate. And uh, more of the safe for round two? Of course. You're looking good, Luke. Looking good. Luke Montoya, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we've got Damiano over here. Damiano started the race off very well, took the lead early. What do you think happened? I don't know, it's just the corners and the gravel pit that were getting me, really. Well, they were in round one, but I want to see better from you in rounds two and three, which we will be coming back for, so don't go anywhere, guys. But right now, it's time to race off to our first review. It's a very scary affair in the console kitchen today because we are taking a look at Ghost Hunter on the PS2. Now, this is a survival horror which features some very disturbing characters. And if you get scared easily, then you better hide behind the sofa now. <laughs> Ghost Hunter is the latest third-person action horror game to come out for the PS2. You control Detroit cop Lazarus Jones as he and his partner make a routine patrol through a supposedly haunted school. On your arrival at the school, you discover the ghost research lab of Professor Peter Richmond and then somehow release a host of demonic ghosts. This causes worldwide chaos that Jones must sort out. But from here on in, the plot thickens. This is because when you release the ghost, both you and your partner were fused with spirits. But whereas you seem to acquire loads of powers for seeing and hunting ghosts, your partner has been spirited away. So not only do you have to save the world, but you also have to rescue your partner as well. This game promises lots of jumps and frights, but will it live up to them? So Simon, I've heard a lot about this game and yeah. I've heard that it will frighten the life out of you. Yeah. Now, is it scary, first of all? Yeah, it is. It yeah. is scary, yeah. I, I, I was playing it earlier, uh, walking around the dark, deserted school that you have to investigate at the beginning of the game, and I turned the corner and there, there was this, like, sprite. And I was like, what's that? And as I approached close to it, it moved, and, and that did make me jump. <laughs> did you jump? I did jump, So, yeah. I mean, is it the kind of game that draws you in with the atmosphere and, like, you know, yeah, the whole game? Yeah, it's very atmospheric. It's got a great storyline. The character animation as well really pulls you in as well, because the, the cut scenes, they go really close up on expressions and that. And, yeah, it's a very, very atmospheric game. 
Now, obviously, we know there's a few scary games on the market at the moment. How does it compare to one of the scariest games ever, which has got to be Silent Hill? I actually prefer this to Silent Hill. I played Silent Hill, and personally, I found it a little slow, whereas this one is far more action-packed. So what about graphics? Because the graphics do look very good. The graphics on this are fantastic. I mean, it's, it's made by the same people who did Primal, which is a massive hit. They use the same engine on this, but they've improved it. And the graphics are fantastic. The textures are lovely. Some of the facial expressions on the characters really blow you away. I and mean, what's your first impressions of Ghost Hunter? Are you into uh, these type of RPG yeah, games? Yeah, it's really good. You start off with all your weapons at the start, and instead of like Silent Hill, when you have to find everything, it's just action packed straight, straight away. away. Yeah. Now, Simon, I'm going to ask you for a G rating out of five Gs for Ghost Hunter on your PS2. This is um, it's a very good game. It's really well made, really nice graphics. There's a lot of fun to be had. It's not going to appeal to everyone, but it'll appeal to a lot of people. So I'm going to give it a high four. Well, you've heard it from the expert Simon. Ghost Hunter on your PS2 gets a high four Gs. Now this, Daz, is a scary game. But now it's time to meet a character who is even more scary, especially when he's in a bad mood. In <sighs> fact, he could be a ghost himself. It's the one and only Games Guru. Boys, I am here. My knowledge is a mixed blessing. I help millions of gamers. But I get no peace. Who needs me now? Guru, I've heard that you can play as Elvis in Matt Hoffman's Pro BMX 2. This is true? You have heard correctly, Samuel. You can indeed play as Elvis. He makes somewhat of an appearance in the game. The king of rock and roll meets the king of BMX. It's a match made. is on the way. At the main menu screen, quickly press this. X, L, L, up, up. If you do this, you will unlock the Elvis costume. And thank you very much. Next. Greg Andrews writes, I myself am a guru, but need help for blood rain on the PS2. Can you help me? One guru to You are a guru, Craig. I don't think so. There can be only one guru. Me. But I can see you have bowed to the superior presence by asking me for help. I shall have mercy and grant you this wish. But you have gotten away. Here is the wisdom you so desire. Enter the code on the level. Uppercase, no space. This will give you the level select you so desperately desire. You may now flit through the levels of blood rain. Be gone. Thank you, Guru, as always. You weren't paying attention, were you? No, I was paying attention, and you guys need to pay attention to this. If you want to get hold of the Guru, you know what to do. You send your emails to guru at gamesville.tv. Did you hear what he just said? That's guru at gamesville.tv. And for UK digital satellite viewers, if you missed any hints, cheats, or tips, you can get them back very easily. Press that red button on your remote. Now, coming up, we'll be checking in with the G Team for some more words of wisdom and some more of those fantastic free downloadables. And we've got the sequel to Homeworld. It's got a lot to live up to. It's the sequel, Homeworld 2, in the PC lounge. So you would be crazy to go anywhere, because all of that is coming up right here on Gamesville.
two in a minute. But coming up in the show, we're going to be giving you some first class two player shooting action as we take a look at Dolphin Blue in our first glance. And we'll be taking you back to 1992 and showing you the best way to get airborne. It's pilot wings and it's on the SNES. But right now it's time for round two of our Formula One face off. Yeah. Right, gentlemen, start your engines. Are we ready, guys? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Jay Jamie, do the honors. Right, so. Three, two, one, let the games begin! Chicane, Damiano approaching the first chicane on Monza. Now, I mean, Luke Montoya has a few problems at the start line, but he seems to have got himself Come on, Damiano, now. keep it smooth. You now don't need to rush him. You just need to take your time around the bends. Nice Manuel, corner. Manuel corner. Oh, he He's catching you up, Damiano. Now, Luke, oh. keep this nice and smooth, and you can catch him, believe me. Just keep your focus. You're at home. You're playing. There's no crowd, no pressure. Just keep it smooth. Oh, never mind. Keep Come on, coming. Come on, Damiano. Now we've got Damiano Schumacher, who is racing in the red Ferrari. And he's just slightly ahead. He's doing extremely well. And you're coming up to a chicane, Damiano. So easy on the brakes. And we've got Luke Montoya, who is in the blue and white car. And he's on the top of your screen. And to let you know, we're playing Formula One 2003 on the PS2. That's what's happening, mate. Well, Damiano just slightly ahead on the bottom screen, doing very, very to the last turn. Indeed, and Luke is take gaining. Easy, but can he gain it. enough? We'll That's see if he it. can take it easy. Enough. As they come into the last home straight before the finish line, it's close. Stay on the track. It's very close. <laughs> We're coming to an end. Oh, no, go over. We do have a winner in round two, and his name's Damiano Schumacher, did incredibly well. We will be coming back for round three any second now, right, Jay? Right, you are, Daz, but right now it's time to check out some people who I've heard of some extremely good drivers. It's the one and only G-Team. You're right, mate. I'm fine, yeah. Today I've got a couple of bits of news about Nintendo. Yeah. Now, first of all, uh, I did say in an early show that uh, Mission Impossible made by Atari isn't coming out for the GameCube. That's right, yeah. But in actual fact, it is. So that's good news for GameCube. Well, GameCube owners, something positive for you there. What else D you got for me? Definitely. Uh, Nintendo, they're also going to be the first company, the first console company, to make games uh, and distribute them in China, which is interesting because China's got a very bad piracy problem. Big, uh, big problems with piracy in yeah, Japan. Yeah, it's absolutely rampant. But what they decided to do, they're going to make a, a new console called the IQ Player. Right. And it's going to cost around £45. And basically what, what you do is you buy these flash memory cards from retailers and, which, and they're going to have uh, like £5, like it's going to cost around about £5, old N64 and SNES games on. OK. So, I mean, it's a, it's a cheap way of, of getting sort of older games. And it doesn't mean that like their GameCube titles are going to be pirated over in China. So That's it's, excellent. Yeah, it's really good. So I'd, I'd hopefully it'll come over here because I you know, wouldn't mind having a go myself. Absolutely. I wouldn't mind having a go myself. Cheers, Matt. Simon, what have you got for me, mate? Um, some interesting news regarding Square's Final Fantasy VII. Square's Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy VII, yeah. Okay. I mean, you may be aware we're on like final, it's Final Fantasy XI. We're up to XI yeah. now, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, 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 but Final Fantasy VII was it's arguably the most celebrated title of, of all the Final Fantasy games. More than nine? More than nine, more than any of them. Everybody, if you ask any aficionado, they'll tell you Final Fantasy VII yeah. was the best. There's rumour that there may be a sequel to Final Fantasy VII. Now, I know it's a bit confusing, but each Final Fantasy title, obviously, is like a completely different storyline, exactly, different yeah. characters. Yeah. It's the whole idea of Final Fantasy yeah, to exactly. everywhere. So this is, they're looking at a sequel as being created at this very moment, apparently. Now, I mean, what's the sequel going to be like? Is it going to be the same style as Seven, or...? Well, there's a bit of confusion here at the moment. It's, it's, we're not sure whether it's going to be a game or a movie. Oh. Yes, yeah, so it could be a movie forwarding the plot, you know, a DVD, so... Well, I've seen Final Fantasy, the movie, and I've got to say, it was first class side. Have you seen it? Yeah, it's wicked, wicked isn't it? Yeah. Jamie. Right, good movie, that one, actually. I've seen that one, too. Now, we get loads of messages here at Gainesville about freebies. You guys simply love them, and you can't get enough. So it gives me great pleasure to bring you two more. Let's meet with Sarah and see what she's got today. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Now, what have you got? 
I've got a puzzler and I've got a spacey one for you today. Puzzler and a spacey one. This first okay. one's called Lines, and it's a really good game. Um, you'll find it at uh, inventive.com forward slash games forward slash lines forward slash index. Quite a long one. But um, it's a grid, and you've got all these different colour marbles or the balls, and um, you have to make lines of five balls. And, um, okay. Like Basically, connect four almost. But yeah. Connect five. Yeah, connect five. Right. And then when you've got five in a row, you see, you can um, they disappear. Oh, then right. if you don't get them in five in a row, then for each ball that you get in the wrong place, three new ones appear. So you're like basically playing catch up the whole time. Right. And you see the little ball whiz round the grid and it's it's tricky. Is it on a time fun. limit or it isn't, no. And you've just got to match up all the colours and the higher you go, the um, the more colours you get, I think. So that's I mean that's that's a game uh, not really for younger viewers, it's pretty much for everyone, but well, I'm for everyone, but yeah. I think the um, yeah, the more tricky it gets towards the end, and then it's game over when all the balls fill up all the grid spaces. So, right. Yeah, a little bit tricky. This next one is a really tricky game, but it's really good fun. It's a game called Radical Aces, and it was suggested by one of our viewers, Stephen Freeburn. Nice you'll find one, this, Stephen. You'll find this one at radicalplay.com. So your mission is to protect the first ever Mars space station, and you've actually got 15 missions, and at the end of them, you get to meet your alien boss, but I haven't got that far yet. But um, this one um, is Stephen's favourite game at the moment. Nice. And um, you control it using yeah. the cursors. Um, fire with the space bar. And if you're in a dire situation and you need to get out, press the J key. And so then there's no mouse on that one? No, all, all on the keyboard. And this is free? Yeah, it's a freebie. A flight simulation game for free, you lucky gamers. Well, I want to say a massive thank you to you, Sarah. No worries. As always. Right, moving from freebies to messages now. We've got one here on the Sky Active, and I'm um, going to have to rush with this, actually. Uh, it's from Faisan Arshad. Hope I pronounced that right. And he wants to know, Jamie, if you could do a Meet Thy Maker on one of your favourite games, what game would it be? Well, I've actually been practising for quite a while now on NHL Hits. 2003 on the PS2 and I must say I'm getting very very good at it so to the makers of NHL hits 2003 you know what I challenge you on Gamesville to a meet thy maker special there you go right now I don't know where he is I think Daz is with Matt somewhere and we need to catch up with him for a first glance Daz what are you doing over there mate I'm here with Matt from the G team and Matt always gets a nice first glance look for us and today we're looking at Dolphin Blue, a brand new arcade game. Now Matt, what is this all about? It looks mad, it looks fast and furious. It is, it's a new one from Sammy, they um, like doing these sort of games really. It's one of those manic 2D shooters. Underwater town of Blue Tier is under attack from the Empire and uh, the Princess and her other male cohort uh, swim through the levels and also above water with their dolphin and uh, shoot at all the bad guys. It's fast and furious, I had a little play of it earlier and I couldn't tell what was going on, there was so much happening on the screen at once. Now, I mean, you know, how easy are the levels? How easy is it to, is it to get through? It's incredibly difficult. It plays a little bit like Metal Slug that um, Sammy had done before. Right, yeah. um, the graphics are very similar as well. It will appeal to hardcore 2D gamers, but if, if you're not into hardcore 2D games, you're going to be putting a lot of money in this because it's a long game and you will be spending your money. You have to be good at these sort of games to see, appreciate it. Lucky, here at Gamesville, we always get arcades first, which is why, you know, we've got Dolphin Blue. But for those of you at home, you're going to have to wait a little bit longer for this one, I think. What about the characters? Tell me a little bit about them. Yeah, well, let's say you've got this princess and this uh, geezer with blue hair here, and the dolphin, you can... It's a bit uh, like you, but with blue hair. Well, he does with blue hair, very strange. Uh, obviously, something gone wrong with his hair dye. Uh, but uh, you've got this dolphin here, and if you press the C button, you can do these attacks. You can make him do these wild spins and stuff. Yeah, I was going to come on to the dolphins, because they play quite an important role in the game, don't they? They do, yeah. They're, they're all your special attacks. They will help you out of a sticky situation. And you get this power bar here, and then you max up your max up your powers and then you can make the dolphin do mad and crazy things to get you out of the So when can the average punter expect to see Dolphin Blue, mate? Well, I'd say it should be running out in the arcade about now. All right, wicked. Well, Dolphin Blue, get your hands on this one. Cheers, Matt. Okay. Top stuff. Right, I'm in the PC lounge where we're looking at Homeworld 2. Now, this game has actually got a lot of pressure on its shoulders because it's the follow-on to Homeworld, which is actually a really good game. And to be fair, it still looks good today. So, I mean, Homeworld 2, what are they bringing to the table that's new and exciting? We'll be finding out very, very shortly. Now, I've got my gamer, Samora, who's going to be giving us his opinions in just a second. And we've got Simon from the G team, who's going to be giving us that good old G rating. But for everyone at home, you need to take a peek at this. The release of the original Homeworld in 1999 spelt massive success for the developer's relic. Even four years later, the graphics and gameplay look fresh and impressive. So this sequel has a lot to live up to. Homeworld 2 is another space-based RTS. 
the story takes up a few years after the previous title, with your people having to defend the world they've so recently inhabited. All the usual RTS-style gameplay is present and the game promises dozens of hours of gameplay as you guide your fleet through some of the most stunning graphics we have yet seen on an RTS title. Single player mode boasts 15 single player missions as well as a load of extra multiplayer modes. But is it enough to make gamers buy the sequel? How you doing, Sai? Jamie, nice to see you. So, I mean, is this massively different from the first game? Well, you know what they say, if it's not broke, don't fix it. It's one of your favourite expressions yeah, in the face-off arena. Um, well, the first game was absolutely fantastic, as you mentioned. And um, you know what? This game's actually very, very similar. Mm. I mean, they've tweaked the graphics a little bit. The play areas are a lot bigger. The ships look a lot nicer close up. But right. it's, it's almost like Homeworld 1 and a half, really. Yeah? So, I mean, I mean, looking at the screen now, Si, I mean, obviously, it's on the PC, it's got a lot of power, and the graphics do look amazing. But have they spent all their time on the graphics, or, I mean, what about the gameplay? Yeah, as you can see, it looks fantastic, doesn't it? I mean, it really does. One of the best-looking uh, RTS games I can think of, actually, maybe this side of CNC Generals. But it's not just about the graphics. They really have thought very long and hard about the gameplay. However, it's very similar to Homeworld. If you didn't like Homeworld, basically, you will not like Homeworld 2. Luckily, I was a fan of the first game, and this is extremely similar. Uh, it's just basically repackaged, different missions, mm. and uh, much slicker and smoother graphics. So, I mean, generally, a better game, in your opinion. Well, you know, it's four years since the first game came out, and, you know, PCs have moved on since then. Yeah, um, I was blown away, like you were, the first time I saw the original game. Yeah. That was four years ago, and now PCs have had four years to develop, and this game is... I don't think it's pushing the boundaries quite as much as the first game. Having said that, it looks absolutely stunning. So, sorry, tell me, is there any major problems that you found with the game? Well, yeah, actually, there is, I'm sorry to say. Um, it's unbelievably difficult. I'm, you know, I play a lot of PC games. I find it very, very hard, especially compared to the first game. I know I keep going back to that, but that really is what we're comparing it to at the moment. Um, the missions are much harder. They, don't, they seem to be a little bit more random. One of the missions, um, you, you've got a, sort of a, big, a big space sort of junket comes out, and you've got to basically salvage this big space junket uh, for some spares. And as you're doing that, another a sort of a fleet of baddies just appears and starts attacking you. And there's nothing... It just feels unscripted, and it just... Things happen which you're not random. expecting to. A little bit random. Having said that, the battles do work very well when you get engaged. Right, now let's meet our gamer. His name is Samora. How you doing, mate? All right, man. Now, welcome to Gamesville. Now, um, you are a bit of a PC gamer, because I had a little chat with you earlier. So, I mean, what's your first impressions of this one? Well, I find that the tutorial was very easy to use. Right. But when you start using the game, then I find it a bit more harder to get used to. But I yeah. think I'm getting used to it now. So, I mean, is there any... Mate, I mean, what did you struggle with? Was it the controls? I mean, what was the problem? Um, there's a lot of controls, and um, you can't find some of your ships. That's fine. Briefly touch on the AI for me. Yeah, well, the AI could be better. I think in a game of this caliber, the AI is one of the few things that lets it down. But uh, also on the control system, the controls are quite intuitive after you've played it for a couple of hours. It's just when you first start off, that they, they tend to be a bit hard. Hmm. So give me a G rating, Sai. Right, well, it's a great game. Graphics are fantastic. Um, it's just not quite as good as it should be. I'm going to give it a, a low four. A low four, yeah. right. It's official from the G team member, Simon himself. Homeworld 2 on the PC gets an official Gamesville. Four Gs. Well, no four. Not bad. Not bad. Could have been a five. Mm. Well, Jay, get your helmet on because it's time to go to the US of A for the final round of our Grand Prix final. <laughs> this is the third and final round of today's Gamesville Formula One Grand Prix. And we are racing on F1 2003 from the PS2. Now, we've got two racing drivers here. First one is Damiano Schumacher. The second is Luke Montoya. And it's one round apiece. It's all to play for in this third and final round. Right, guys, please take your seats yep. and start your engines. Step into your cockpits, gentlemen. Right, this third and final track is USA Indianapolis. And it is all to play for. So, guys, when you're ready, three, two, one. Let, Let the, the race, race begin! Yeah. 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 There's not Jay. He goes straight across the chicane. Go, go. I'm talking about Montoya, but he's looking smoother now. Oh, Damiano doing very well. Seems to think this is off-road driving. Well, Luke Montoya. Come on, Damiano, stick to the track. You're a professional race driver. Luke Montoya.
Absolutely, Jay, and we are. Oh, 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 There's a huge crash, a massive crash, and Damiano Schumacher manages to come out of it just unscathed. Luke Montoya still playing catch up, but there really is nothing oh, in it so at the moment. Close at the moment. It is as it is. Now we've got Luke Montoya, who's in the blue and white car. He's on the top of your screen. And we've got Damiano Schumacher on the bottom screen. He's racing in the red Ferrari, Jay. And you've got to love this game, haven't you? You've got to love it, Daz. Formula One, 2003 on the PS2. Stay on the track, Damiano. Come from the left, stay on the stay in the middle, stay in the middle. And keep it straight, just keep it straight. Keep it straight, keep it straight, keep it straight, keep it straight. Keep it straight. Keep it straight. Damiano. Schumacher, he has proved his worth on Formula One 2003 on the PS2. And let me just get my breath back. Damiano, well done. I did not say, man. Yeah, 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 I feel good, but you know, easy. Yeah, <laughs> you did say what you were going to do, and uh, you are today's Gainesville champion. Now, Damiano, I've got a bit of a surprise for you, mate, because we don't want to give you that certificate with just plain Gainesville on it. No, we want to stamp it with Gainesville Elite. Now, to do that, you have to earn it, and you have to race me in a face-off in our final track Ooh. on Suzuka. Confident? That says it all! <laughs> oh, look, look, look. He did so well. I really was backing you there, mate, but you just couldn't quite do enough at the end. I mean, what happened? I don't know what it is with these cars, but they keep going off into the right when you start. You just Maybe it's the way up. you're steering the wheel, mate. Maybe no, it's the mate, way I think this wheel's a bit brocked up, mate. <laughs> oh, my workman always blames his tools, but you did do well, mate. And did you have fun? Yeah, of course I did. Nice one. Well, right, Jay, now it's time to go over to a guy, if, if, if he was in a Formula One car, I don't even think he'd use his hands. He'd just use his mind tricks, because mm. there's only one man who can do that, and it's a good. Ah, uh, you joined me once again, but I have the knowledge. And you... Who needs my assistance? Games go. I want all the skaters on the Simpsons skateboarding on the PS2. Is there an easy way to get them? The Simpsons on a skateboard? The Simpsons on a skateboard? What a preposterous idea. Although strangely for me. You have asked me for the skaters, and I must find them. I must find them. Found them. At the character selection screen, hold down all four shoulder buttons. Now enter circle, triangle, X, square. The skaters are yours. Go take those little yellow people and put them on skateboards. They are all yours. They are all yours. Next, Gage Guru. I need enlightenment. I am stuck on the subway level of Spider-Man on the PS1. Can you give me the cheats for all of the levels, Callum Dunbar? Callum Dunbar, you are yet another slug. You can't complete a level, so you simply cheat. But I feel that it's still time to save you. I am not too late. Listen to my words, Callum. Listen well. At the cheats menu in the specials menu, and put this code X C L S I O R. It's Excelsior without the E's. This will give you the level select you require. Go, my friend, use my wisdom and be a slacker. Thank you, Guru. CJ, I pay attention. And if you need some expert gaming advice, contact guru at gamesville.tv. And in case you didn't catch that, that was guru at gamesville.tv. And for all you UK digital satellite viewers out there, if you've been silly enough to miss any hints, cheats or tips, well, I've got a way you can get them back. Pick up your remote control and press your red button. But coming up, we've got a rapping dog. It goes head to head with a screaming guitar in a rhyme busting clash of the titles. And our face off champion, Damiano, will be going for that elite stamp against my boy Daz here. But will he get it? Will he get it? Elite stamps? No way, Jose. Because <laughs> it's all coming up right here on Gamesville.
show. But don't worry, because coming up in part three, Winnie the Pooh's little mate Piglet will be trying to help him find his honeypot in the mobile pad. I just don't think it's there, though. Listen. Christopher Robin, you'll be able to link up with your beer a little bit later. Just chill out. <laughs> and we're also going to be looking at a retro classic because Pilot Wings lands on our retro table. But stop, because right now it's time for today's Clash of the Titles. What is Clash of the Titles? It's where two games of the same type go head to head. And today I am playing Parappa the Rapper 2, boy. And I'm playing Guitaro Man. Now, Daz, you don't stand a chance, mate, because this is actually the third game in the Parappa family. There are loads of really funny levels, like Beard Burgers, a burger town tradition, strictly for adults, romantic karate. Grab that remote control and loads, loads more. There's also loads of great characters to meet along the way, such as uh, Chop Chop Master Onion. You know what, Dad? Shall I go on? No, Because I can go on all day, mate. Jay, do me a favour. Just stop. Because in this game, when I say you play, I mean, you play this game. You take control of a teenager who just keeps being attacked by monsters and you must fend them off with your wild guitar. Solos all done by accurate manipulation of the joypad. This game features a control system that's absolutely genius, unlike any other game of its type. It's fun, fun, fun. That's what this game is all about. The tunes are rocking and the game is colourful and quirky. And I've got to say, Jay, I think Papa the Rapper better hand over its crown. Let's talk about credibility. De La Soul helped to create some of the tracks in this game. I mean, come on, De La Soul. Talk about credibility. Ability. Oh dear. Once you complete this game as well, it unlocks an excellent two-player mode with great characters, excellent tunes, and bright graphics. That's you can't compete. Real. Enough of that noise. Let's see what the G team think. G team, give us your verdict. Right then, we've got two great games here. Very funny. Lots to see, lots to do. Crazy games, both of them. Parappa the Rapper, good fun, but it's gonna have to be Guitar Man, no I'm afraid. Way. Just not good enough, James. Sorry. Oh. Oh. Today, Guitaro Man wins Clash of the Titles. I'm off to the mobile pad. <laughs> Come here, guys. Join us in the mobile pad, because I'm here with GT member Lucy and Christopher Robin. Sorry, I mean Jamie. And we're looking at a brand new game for your GBA. What is it, Luce? We've got Piglet's big game on the GBA. Ooh. Now, I want to do something slightly different today. Before I tell you about the game, I want to get you in the mood. So I'd like you to close your eyes while I tell you a bedtime story. Everybody in the mobile pad, please just close right. your eyes. OK, ready? It's another blustery day in the Hundred Acre Wood, and Pooh, Tigger, Roo, Rabbit, Owl and Eeyore are having bad dreams. They're dreaming of heffalumps and woozles. Pooh's lost his honey, Roo's lost his ball, and Eeyore has lost the colours in his dreams. OK, wake up now. <laughs> How you sleep? Right, basically, what you've got to do... He won't even sleep, he won't. That's the scene perfectly. What you've got to do is you play Piglet, yeah. and you've got to show your courage by going into your friend's dreams and solving the bad things that happen in the dreams. You start off in Pooh's dream, and you've got to find Pooh some honey. And it's such fun. It's such a great, <laughs> fun game. Sorry. I know it's designed for four, five-year-olds. Will you be quiet for a second? We're trying to do a honestly, serious I review love it. here. <laughs> Sorry, Lou. <laughs> it's an action-adventure game. Now, the action involved in this game is that you have to beat the woozles. You <laughs> it's not that funny. You have to beat the woozles and heffalumps, who are so cute, and you, you beat them by scaring them. How'd you do that? But, well, you have to collect lots of biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> I'm this serious. Guy. But do you know what? I know that it, they're, all the things are really childish, but it's actually really nah. good fun. And I'm, you know, I'm 30 and I'm telling you. This is, <laughs> no, on a serious note, this is like for your younger gamer, it's obviously. Definitely it is. for your younger yeah. gamer. It's fun, it's bright and colourful, and it's got all these great characters in there. And you do have to find these biscuits to collect your, your scary faces to scare off the woozles. <laughs> <But>, I mean, <laughs> just, just briefly, any bad things you don't like about the game? Uh, do, do you know what? No, not really. I don't think there is. The what? bad dreams are quite scary, but other than that... All right, so G-rating, please, Luce, please, put me out my misery. you have to suspend your disbelief and actually imagine that I've really tried to get into the head of a four- and five-year-old yeah. to play this game, and I reckon it Not gets bad. at least, <laughs> at least three Gs. Three Gs? Yeah. Very <laughs> decent. Piglet's big game on the GBA gets an official games bill. Three Gs. Now, I know that you, you've had enough of this section, so, uh, should we get retro? Please, Jay, let's get retro. <laughs> Jay, picture this, mate. It's 1992, and I'm parachuting to pass another test. What am I talking about? It's pilot wings. Oi, pay attention. I am paying attention, Daz, I am. And to prove it, let me take you back to 1992, my man, because it was a great year for entertainment. Batman returned, Macaulay Culkin was home alone again, and Wayne and Garth were ruling the world. 
party on, Daz. Showing. This was also the year that Take That topped the charts. Who would have predicted that Young Robbie would go on to bigger and better things, Jay? Not me, Daz. But this was also the year that gaming stepped up a gear as the Super Nintendo was released in the UK. And with it came a little-known game by the name of Pilot Wings. Mm, taking on the role of a trainee pilot, your mission was to fly, freefall, and hang glide your way to becoming a fully-fledged squadron leader. Do I remember that? Using revolutionary Mode 7 technology, those clever Nintendo programmers were able to trick the 16-bit machine into running 3D graphics, making swooping and soaring a whole lot mwah, sweeter. Absolutely. The game was updated for the N64, and there are rumors of the GameCube remake. But if you ask me, this will always be the daddy. This will always be the daddy, Daz. You're right, mate. But I tell you what, let's meet the granddaddy of gaming. You know who I'm talking about. The one and only Guru. Ask the Guru. I am here, boys. Who wishes to ask the Guru? Mm. Jade Sutton asks, what type of creature is Knuckles? She thinks he's really weird looking. That is an easy question, Jade. Well, easy for the guru. Sonic is a hedgehog, Tails is a fox, and Knuckles is an echidna. These are shy porcupine-like animals found mainly in Australia. Next, Shams writes, What's up, Guru? Do you ever sleep? And is there any end to your gaming knowledge? Shams. Shams. I have no need for such mortal things as sleep. Although I do occasionally nod off when Darren and Jamie are talking. I am nourished and replenished by the wisdom I bring. That is all I need. And Shams. I guess there must be an end to my gaming knowledge, for I cannot figure out what possessed you to ask me this question. Now, if you've just joined us, you have missed a cracking face-off. So let me recap. This belongs to Damiano. He is today's face-off champion, and he's sitting in his cockpit. He's just down there. He's getting really focused because he wants to earn an elite stamp right here. But to do that, he's got to beat my copy over there, Daz. And we all know that Daz knows what to do when he's behind a steering wheel. Now, the scene is set. I just want to say this is Formula One 2003 on the PS2, and we are ready to go. Are we ready to go, people? Yeah! yeah. This is the big one. Is he just a champion or is he an elite champion? We're going to be finding out. Gentlemen, please start your engines. Remember to put your seatbelts on. Safety first. OK, three, two, one. Let the race begin. Now we have got Daz, who is driving as Montoya on the top screen. His name is actually Darren Montoya. And um, he is at the moment in second position. And we've got Damiano, who is driving as Schumacher. Now they both seem to be in the sound a little bit at the moment, but there's still a very long way to go. We are driving in Suzuka, the Japanese Grand Prix, for our third, for our fourth and final race of this season. And at the moment, I must say, Damiano is doing very well, but it's a long way to go. Daz is gaining, keep it nice and smooth, Daz. You know the drill. And Damiano at the moment, Damiano Schumacher, he's at the bottom of your screen. Straight. 
and gentlemen, Damiano, let me just grab your certificate, my friend. I couldn't put a stamp there. I really wanted to, but I couldn't. But you was up against Daz. But you know what? Forget all that. You are today's face-off champion. There you go. There's your certificate. Now, he did very well. And I just want to emphasize, that was not an easy elite championship. That was very, very difficult. And you did do well, my friend. Daz, if there's other people at home watching, they're sitting on their couch, they think they can do better, what well, can they do? Jay, it is very, very simple. You press the red button on your remote and you get interactive. Because you know what? It will only cost you 25p, so do ask the bill payer for permission first. We're talking to all of you UK digital satellite viewers out there. That's right. Home. Don't be anonymous. Get involved. But you know what, my friend? I really need to calm down and just take a seat. I mean, it's the end of the show now. It's the time where everyone calms down. But, um... Do join us again right here for some more Gamesville action! Woo!